Hello? Hey, what's going on? I guess uh, I did see an, uh, a document you added to the folder. Um, yeah, I owe you a bunch more, but I'm going to upload a community plan update that was just shared with me from the principal developer um, that I think is quite interesting because it doesn't make sense how it ties into the master plan at all. Um, Were you able ever to s hear any update on the Village for Vets uh, second grant or additional grant? Or No, I haven't heard um, anything yet. I did hear that um, the VA was having some challenges, I think, with Rebecca, but I don't think that's going to stop them from issuing them the grant. So I'll, I'll see if I can get more info. I also... I need to get Heidi, I need to ask Heidi about the hot bash questions you had, because she'll know the answer to that. Regarding the, year. the expiration? Yeah, she'll definitely know that. Um, but, yeah, let me see if I can find out anything more on that award, because it, it has to be coming pretty soon. I think they're going to let people know in August, so. Regarding the... Um the emergency assistance where like they'll pay for the veteran up to 10 months. Are you familiar with that in particular? Yeah. yeah. With a max of 10 months in a two year period, no more than six months in any 12 month period. And then it looks like, Oh, I guess for extremely low income, it's a max of 12 months in a two year period and nine months and a 12 month. But let me look at the CFR and see if I can find out what those exact amounts are. And does it, and, the, and what you're reading, like who wrote those words? This was the, an email I sent you uh, Friday the 21st at like 9.59. And it's a PowerPoint deck that was like the NOFO training that VA gave to like interested potential grantees. If you go into the um, properties, John Keen is the author who used to run SSVF for Vaco, but now is the deputy medical center director. What issue do you suppose that presents, if any at all? He is now at GLA as the deputy medical center director and formerly ran SSVF. Like, I mean, he of all people should be able to see if Village for Vets is doing a good job or not. Um, obviously very speculative, but I don't know. If I ran a program for like three years and was exposed to tons of terrible grantees and probably some good ones, I bet I could see Village for Vets and be like, yeah, they're terrible. We need, we should get, we should find another one and not just issue them $3 million. Is John Kuhn the one that's signing that off? He would certainly be consulted because SIRS reports to him in this capacity. You have a relationship with uh, Andrew Strain, right? Yeah, he, he and I used to work together um, at Concourse. So yeah, I have a pretty decent relationship with him. He has an interesting reputation now that he works for VA because he talks with like Rob Reynolds and others, but... I don't, I don't want it like cause issues for you or certainly don't want folks to, you know, I don't know what they would do, but. I saw, I don't know. I saw him the other day, but I definitely just kept my distance, but I've had convos with him where it's like, he just doesn't make, com he just isn't able to comment, I suppose, because of his position. He can't comment on it time because they, I mean, they would fire him in a second. It, and does he, I think he, obviously he has something to do with that. The website, right? The dot org one at the moment, or yep, he definitely does. Right. Well, I'm not sure I have much else. I mean, I guess overall, what are your thoughts on what's proceeding at the, at the you know, over there? Uh, I mean, this community plan thing that I saw like reignited my concern about like the principal developer team trying to just like take over the campus, you know, it, it basically, it includes references to the town center. It includes 
you know, their entire design guidelines for the campus, which I'm not quite sure if they're consistent with the programmatic agreement and the historic nature, or they're consistent with VA guidelines. Um, you know, I'm concerned with how much money all this stuff costs. It's not ideal when it's the principal developer team and nothing's happened with Safran and they're just audacious in their assumption that the town center is theirs and they're driving this forward, not VA or veterans is really my big concerning part. Do you see something being able uh, to occur to, you know, stop that or? Um, I mean, honestly, I thought, I guess I'm pretty naive. I thought the second thing would at least like cause some serious like analysis of what's happening. Um, I do think there's some pretty compelling argument for the financial piece. Um, and you can tell me if I'm wrong when you look at the first four that I'll send, but you know, it's affordable housing. There's all of these tax credits that need to happen, but it feels weird to me that these folks would be getting exceptionally like wealthy doing it, like charging 15 to 20% overhead on VA capital contributions is like very concerning to me. If VA is giving the developer 1.5 million to do the steam line and they spend a million of that on the actual work and 500,000 of that in oversight, that feels very problematic to me. And that's what the performa clearly shows. Yeah, it shows that. And I can sort of extract some other docs if I have access to them that will show that even further. But like when you just look at the numbers, it's bananas. What about removing the entities that are utilizing the land and not principally benefiting veterans? Yeah, I mean, I'm supportive of that. I don't think, I mean, look, the VA has been saying, I guess, let's see, since 2018, no, 2016, we can't do this alone. And so ways that they've justified keeping land users like Brentwood School in the city of LA and UCLA is because of the in-kind benefits that are derived by those. I don't think, I think we have now seven years almost of data to look at to say, what has VA spent the least revenues on? Not a lot. I mean, they spent some of it on CTRS upgrades, but the argument that keeping these folks on the campus because it principally benefits veterans, like overwhelmingly, I think is extremely flimsy. Like going to a UCLA baseball game is not worth, in my opinion, is not worth keeping someone on the campus if that could be utilized for housing or something. Putting your opinion aside, right? Uh, but regarding everything you know about uh, that land, uh, do you think it's in the Office of Inspector General, et cetera, do you think that it's lawful? No, I don't. Right, so... Um, and I think that's when you and I talked about the lawsuit from ICLC and um, Mark, public counsel, this was one of the bolder things I was hoping they would do. Like the 2018 OIG report, they should have hung one of their few hats on that and got an injunction to stop any additional land users on the campus. It would make no sense that VA could just ignore the inspector general's findings. Like if the IRS found that I didn't pay taxes and I couldn't prove that I did, I don't get to just ignore that and be like, hey, that's gonna impact me. And that's what VA is kind of doing or has been doing for five years. Right. I guess that's that's the reality of it is the law. Um, 
you know, Brentwood school goes there and gives them hot dogs and cards, right? To some, right. to some that could seem awesome. At the same time, it could seem exploitive. Right, exactly. So, Especially in the face of that 2018 climate. The law just has to be followed. Brentwood School and UCLA are still both humming along on the campus. Like, so someone could be like, yeah, look, there are negative findings. They explicitly said Brentwood School is not compliant, and Brentwood School is, has since renegotiated their lease, I think. The law is the law, and our opinions do not matter. Right, in the town center, it doesn't appear to follow the law. Right. Awesome. Well, uh, have a safe drive tomorrow. I'll ring you if uh, anything stands out. That's all I got. Perfect. All right, appreciate it. I appreciate it. Later, man. Later. Peace.